everyone, it's Jack from Cultaholic.com, joined by Adam Pacitti and Ross Tweddle. Ross on wrestling? It's Ross Tweddle. Ross <laughs> Tweddle. Uh, and we're here with another nine pitches video, this time for this Sunday's Elimination Chamber. Remember the golden rule, it's not what you think will happen, it's, it's what you want to happen! Yeah. Give us a subscribe. <laughs> Give us one of them. Um, yeah, this looks like it's going to be an interesting show. There's quite a few matches announced. Two chamber matches. Does it like to be an interesting show? It does look like it's going to be interesting, yeah. Does it? Interesting. <laughs> There's two chamber matches announced. One for the SmackDown Tag Team titles and one which Shayna Baszler will win to send her to <laughs> WrestleMania to face Becky Lynch, surely. Um, but let's just crack straight on with it. Adam, what's your first pitch? Uh, mine uh, involves the SmackDown tag title match inside the chamber. And I want to see a recreation of the best elimination chamber moment of all time where Shawn Michaels came up through the great super kick The Undertaker, allowing Chris Jericho to pick up the win. Chris Jericho won't be there on Sunday. I'm going to put money on that right Whoa. now. Uh, however, who I'd like to see in that role is Sonya Deville. Oh! So Sonya Deville comes up through the floor and lays out both Otis and Tucker. This happens at the end. Everybody, <laughs> I know, right? Right, so Otis and Tucker have had a great performance. They're hitting moves we've never seen before. Everybody's into them as a big tag team unit. They're the future of the biz, baby. But Sonya Deville ruins everything. It comes out. And uh, the reason for this is because, first of all, it'll keep Otis and Tucker together. Because let's face it, without Otis, Tucker is screwed. Oh, he is, isn't he? It's just untrustworthy. Okay. <laughs> um, so Tucker uh, keeps his friend and stays relevant for another year until they are broken up. Broken up. Uh, and also, it makes Sonya look like the badass, legit fighter that she actually should be presented okay. as. Okay. Makes it. sense. So why has she done it? Because she's the one that did the text. And all oh. that. So a bit more storyline in there. Otis and Tucker get over together. People care about Otis more especially. Um, and they've had their tag team uh, championship opportunity taken away from them by somebody who's really, really good and doesn't get used well enough. Does she do it allowing Ziggler and Rude to eliminate them? Is she in cahoots with Dolph? Oh, I didn't really think about that. Yeah, yeah, I think that... I don't want to see... The, the rumoured match at the moment is Otis versus Dolph at WrestleMania, and that doesn't sound like a WrestleMania match to me. With so, the story behind it. Yeah. It is a WrestleMania. It's the main event of WrestleMania. The, the closing shot of WrestleMania this year should be Otis jiggling. <laughs> with, with Mandy on his shoulder like Miss Elizabeth. Necking on. Doing oh, all sorts. Oh, here He's we go. giving it a jiggle as well. <laughs> okay. Why the hell not? Give the people oh. what they want. Um... It's a yes from me, especially because I think that Sonya has been slightly lost in the shuffle since Mandy's been getting this push. And she is a legit fighter and everything. And I think, yeah, why not? And for everybody who's going to say it's not legit, how can one person take out two big lads and all that? But they've been knackered after a long Elimination Chamber match. She just needs to deck them with a few shots. I like it. I think it's really good. They, don't, they will be knackered. I mean, it's not going to happen. They, they would be knackered. Uh, but also, she she's legit enough to, to take either of them out with the right strike. Oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Ross. Tess Lynham. It's a yes from me. What about you? It's a, it's a hard no. Oh. It is a hard no it's for one thing. reason, one reason only. Sonia saying to Mandy, Dolph Ziggler is much more of a Mandy person than Otis. I'm sat here... Otis, for my people of my stature, is a beacon of hope in life uh, for all kinds of reasons. He's not going to get the girl. Ross. He is going to get the girl. <laughs> Tucky is leading that man down a path. So I, would, he is. I would like to point out, if you stood next to Otis, you would not look the same size. Oh, we're the same size. <laughs> of course we are. He's a beacon of hope for all of us fat lads. As Otis, he's doing our work for us, living our dreams out, and getting the girl we supposedly can't have us fat bastards. So no for that, Adam. Okay. Sonny's a bad person, <laughs> and she deserves to suffer. Not that I totally agree with your analysis here, Ross, but if if, if it is how you are saying it's portrayed here in storyline, do you have faith in... No, not not that this is what we think will happen, but but just just out of interest, do you think that Vince McMahon of all people is going to let Otis get the girl? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, He's he, be he humiliated. Did, he did go back on himself slightly. He did let uh, Rusev and Lana be a married couple for a bit, didn't he? On on camera, and then yeah. split them, and, then, and then split them up again. <laughs> yeah. So Bobby could have her, um, or she could have Bobby. Still, uh, Bobby. still yeah. going on. I'm surprised. Yeah, it's still going on, isn't it? So yeah, why? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, this can do anything as far well as I'm concerned. So it's a no from you. It's a hard no it's from a yes me. Yes from me. You've got a half. 
Thank you. I'll so take well it. Done. Well done. Ross? Uh, I'm going to that Women's Chamber match as well. Sonia. Sonia? Shayna will win. Obviously, we all know that. But I need to see Becky Lynch do what she's been saying for a long time now. She's been threatening Shayna, saying, oh, I'm going to get my hands on you before you get them on me. We'll go back to this again. Well, I've said it many times this week is the, the big stare down they had on Raw after Shayna's match. Shayna was down the ramp. Becky was up the ramp. She's like, oh, I've got me, I haven't got my wrestling boots on, but if I did, I'd come and get you. That's not Becky Lynch. It's not very her at that's, all. That's not Becky Lynch at all. So I need to see, because I don't, talk, I think Tom is right when he's saying that they're doing this on purpose, setting her up for a big old fall when she's being too confident and into her own ego and being too like Conor McGregor and all that. But I don't want to see that from Becky Lynch personally. So I want to see her go back to being demand. And just going down there and doing something horrible to Shayna. After Shayna's won the chamber. After Shayna's won the chamber. What did she do to her, Ross? Doesn't involve biting. That's one thing <laughs> okay. it does not involve. Just something something good and badass, you know? See the badass man back again. Laser out with the rock bottom. Yeah. Go on. Um, I want to see something, though, because she's, she's turning into one of those old talk looking like a twat heels. Which uh, I'm not not a fan of. And then who would you have? I'm assuming you'd have Shayna win at WrestleMania still. Oh, Shayna's got to win at WrestleMania. Right, right, right. I want to see Shayna rip her head off after what she's <clears> been doing the past few weeks. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I yeah. just don't like. I don't find her likable anymore. I find her quite annoying. It's a shame. It is a shame, and I don't. I can't believe they would do this intentionally, unless of course they are doing what Tom has predicted. Which he, the more he says it, the more it makes sense. They might be. Um, I think it's a yes from me. I think. I think that I also wouldn't really like to see Becky as a heel. I feel like. As you've mentioned previously, she's been built too organically like Daniel yeah. Bryan. But as Daniel Bryan did a fantastic job when he turned heel after that whole rise and everything. But I think that I think that people just are too invested in cheering for Becky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some people aren't seeing what I'm seeing, if that if that makes any sense. Some people are like Yes, because yeah, people are, yeah, because I was like, Am I the only one who's on WTF this week? Am I the only one who's starting to hate Becky Lynch? And a lot of comments were like, Yeah, you are. Oh, oh. interesting. Yeah. A lot oh, of people I thought are, that was the consensus. Yeah. All right, fair enough. Uh, it's a hard yes from me. Well, yeah, yeah, bold, so. because like I don't mind too much Becky Lynch turning heel if if that's the direction that they're going. Let's say that is the direction that they're going, but her personality shouldn't change to the point where she's being a little wimp. She should just be doing nasty stuff, but still be uh, not arrogant. What's the word I'm looking for? Confident enough yeah. to, to do all this stuff. It, it, that's too much of a change for me. That you don't need that drastic a change. And I think Becky looks like a bit of a mug because of it. Mm -hmm. I, I agree as well, and it and it nicely brings me onto my pitch. So that's a, a big old yes for you there. It's a double yes. It's a double yeah. yes. Um, mine also concerns the phenomenon, phenomena, phenomenon, the the trend in WWE of heels. Once they turn heel, they lose all their wrestling ability. They can't win a match clean anymore. It doesn't. It's not for every single person. Obviously, not Lesnar, but the vast majority of heels start cheating even when they shouldn't have to now. And the one I want to talk about is AJ Styles, because since not since he's turned heel, but in recent weeks he has turned into not the phenomenal one, guys. Not the phenomenal one at all. He lost to the Undertaker after one choke slam. Undertaker didn't even take off his hat and his coat. Um, and this week on Raw. There was an infuriating segment, and it took up a lot of the show, where Styles was going to have this match with Aleister Black. I thought, good, he's going to get some of that momentum back that he lost at Super Showdown, and we're going to buy him as a viable threat to The Undertaker again. That's not what happened at all. He instead did a bit of a Sami Zayn, changed the contract, because that's allowed or something. He said, you didn't read the fine print, Aleister. First, you've got to wrestle Carl Anderson. Aleister Black beat Carl Anderson. Guess what happened? Now you've got to wrestle Luke Gallows. Gallows didn't even lose to Alistair Black. He just got DQ'd for kicking him too much in the corner. Then Styles had his match with a very weakened Alistair Black and pinned him with the phenomenal forearm and put his hands on his chest and everything like The Undertaker would. But it didn't, for me, build up AJ Styles at all. They're going to have a no DQ match now at Elimination Chamber, Styles and Alistair Black. And I want, uh, I want AJ Styles to win clean after a really hard-fought and brutal match. And if they were allowed to do blood, I'd like to see a bit of blood as well, but they're probably not going to do that. But I'd like to see AJ Styles beat Alistair Black clean after a really hard and tiring match. And Styles has really earned this big win over a dangerous man. And then we'll see him as a viable threat once again for, for Undertaker. Okay. Do y'all think Styles is injured? Oh. I still think he's injured. That's why he's taking a bit of a backseat. That's why he had one move. Because in the in R-Truth the, bit before the choke slam, he did nothing there as well. Didn't he just he? danced loads. He just danced, didn't he? And then obviously on Roy, he did nothing again. I think this, this, they're keeping him on TV, obviously, because he's got a WrestleMania match but he can't do anything because of an injury. That's a good shout. Well, if that's the case, then I don't know how they get around yeah, this. I don't know how they get around it. But he's well, having they... an ODQ match on Sunday. Surely yeah. he'd be all right for that. Gallows and Anderson will yeah, be Yeah, they're going to yeah. do all the work here. And I think 
we might be expecting too much from AJ and Taker at WrestleMania. I think we might get a handicap match. So I think all of this stuff involving Gallows and Anderson might make sense in the long term because they're going to be used at WrestleMania three on one versus Undertaker, which <sighs> I actually wouldn't be against. Oh, Taker's going to well, beat them all. That'll be he? like a two minute squash match with the OC winning. <laughs> yeah, they're the best bad. tag team in the world yeah, exactly they, they sure are. Um, yeah I do want to see AJ look like a credible threat against The Undertaker they need to do something drastic at Elimination Chamber to make this work they've got four weeks afterwards yeah. so I think your thinking is probably the best if it's going to be a singles match if it's going to be a three on one then I'd have them all get involved oh. and then Alistair Black doesn't look weak as a result I think they've they've sort of booked themselves into a bit of a corner here with Alistair Black he's been doing this <clears> thing where he's Going up the raw totem pole, and he's gonna. He started with Akira Tozawa and Eric Young, and, and and that, and then he's all of a sudden he's fighting AJ. He's, he's just taking not his as first good. Yeah, he's just not as good as Styles, is he? That's a waste of Alistair Black, though. I, I want Alistair Black to do something good. I don't think he's gonna be doing anything at Mania, but I don't think he should be the one taking the fall here. He had that good feud with Buddy Murphy as well. Yeah. I was convinced that Black was gonna have a big, important, not a main event, but a big, important match at Mania, and now it really doesn't look like he is. No, Looks I thought like... we were gonna get Black versus Taker. I'm not. I'm not upset with Styles versus Taker. No, but that that would have probably been more Passing intriguing. Passing the torch. Yeah, yeah. Taker's not going anywhere though. He's going to be doing this for ten more years, isn't it? <laughs> the, the torch is well and truly lit at this point. I like it if yeah, if we're getting a singles match, then right. AJ needs to win this. Uh, but Black can't look bad either. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't like it for that reason because I don't want Black to lose again. Okay, quickly. Like I like the fact that they were building a, a new star. We go back to this. Yeah, the Goldberg tie-in. Build new stars. They were, they were doing it, Alistair Black. Yes, it was taking a long time because they gave him that silly room <laughs> and all that stuff. But it was people. He still had that aura about him, didn't he? And it's just sort of been taken away a little bit with his, his undefeated streak on the main roster ending. And I don't want to see him lose again in quick succession because immediately he's just another one of the pack, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Just that another make wrestler sense. on Raw mm. with a spooky entrance and a spooky jacket. Well, then that's a good point as well. And a few tattoos. Yeah, I understand yeah. that then. Yeah. Feel bad now. Just build new stars. <laughs> <laughs> Make yeah, them win. Know, have, have, the, have the young lads win a few matches. So it's a half, it's a yes and a no. Yeah, it's right. just a shame they, yeah. they did do this match again. Why not have Styles take on your yeah, Eric Youngs and people of that ilk in a handicap match and have them just squash them? Styles? Yeah, and just oh. have, them, have them beat them instead of beating the guy who, you know, could still be made a thing of. Where is Eric Young? I don't know. Wasn't he part of... <laughs> main when... event. You had a main event match oh, nice. this week. I read the spoilers. Jimbo when... Spoilers, like anyone cares. <laughs> Do you remember when Shane McMahon had a little entourage of heels to help protect him? Yeah, well, he had sanity. He had sanity? Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, that's why Young was there. And he also, had, he also had Epico or Primo, one of them? Yeah, the bad. Yeah, Primo. The oh, bad. The, bad. Oh. the evil one. <laughs> um, right, that's, uh, that's the first round of pitches out of the way. Now, Adam. What's your uh, second mine one? Mine involves the Intercontinental title handicap match, Braun Strowman taking on the good wrestlers. Can I just mention before you get into this, now that it's out there, and check out the video, by the way, because our editor Owen did a phenomenal job on this, and the writer as well, it was uh, Jack Atkins, wasn't it, who wrote this yes, list? Yes, wonderful guy. Shout out to both of those guys for the, the ranked video of every IC champion ranked. We have been, especially Adam, we have been fixated on the IC championship scene to make any changes to the script and everything for the past... Since January the 3rd, I think is when he started on it. It's and been a long time We've been going, video. please don't do loads yeah. of title changes. And it's not been the most action-packed title scene, but we've been watching it like hawks. It's yeah. been brilliant. We got it out this week just in case. Yes. Just in case Chamber yes. uh, changes things. So uh, my pitch is for Sami Zayn to get a sneaky win over Braun Strowman. Oh. If, he's, if he's injured and he can't do as much as has been reported, that's fine. The other two do the work, creating uh, a bit of tension between those uh, those three. Yep. Braun Strowman goes and has a match with Colin or Michael or whatever. It is. <laughs> I love to uh, see Colin. Yeah, or uh, Tyson if they're going to chuck twenty million out. Tyson, Tyson Fury. Fury, oh, not Mike God. Tyson. <laughs> sorry, Mike. Tyson kid. Uh, so then we get some lovely matches involving Cesaro, Shinsuke Nakamura, and the Intercontinental Champion, the new Intercontinental Champion, uh, Sami Zayn, because we mentioned this in the podcast, which was just recorded before, but they're three guys who are just criminally misused, and the Intercontinental Championship has been the workhorse belt, or it was in the past, mm. and now it's been, for a while, for quite a while, an afterthought. So I feel like we blab on about the Intercontinental Championship not being um, presented properly, and we've been doing that for a long, long time, but let's actually do it now. Let's put it on Sami Zayn and let's have them have brilliant matches. Those three guys who are just so, so good and, yeah, criminally misused. So you misused. think they should all feud with each other? 
over yeah. this belt. Because they because maybe uh, yeah, Cesaro and Nakamura have done all the work. So Snammy, is that Snammy? Salami runs in, uh, <laughs> and gets the pin, uh, and so they're a bit annoyed with him. So so Nakamura and Cesaro would slowly turn face. I guess you'd have oh. to, yeah. Or maybe, yeah. yeah. No, that's fine, because Sammy's way better as a heel. Yeah, he is. He's, he's really he's annoying. Fantastic. Yeah, he's, he is fantastic. He is so good. Main he's... roster Sammy Zayn. What? Main uh, roster Sammy When he comes down, he's doing all the dancing and the flapping about. He's so annoying, but in a Obviously, the heart, the heart and soul of NXT is better than yeah. heel yeah. Sammy, but as a, on the main roster, right. it works a lot better. I like it. But I did see recently a comment saying, like, Jack's ability to sit on the fence will never fail to astound me. And I was like, wow. Oh, I got a lot of thumbs up, though. It didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say yes again though, because I do like it. How can I? How can I go against something that'll lead to matches like a rematch between Zayn and Nakamura after that amazing NXT Dallas one, or Zayn and Cesaro? They had some excellent matches as well back on NXT. So yeah, I'd say yes from me. And I think that you're right. Strowman can go off, and the one bit I'd say no to is go off and feud with Colin from SNL. Oh, I don't care what he does. To Strowman be can do something good, right? Yeah, just yeah. I, I don't care what he does. Wow. I don't. Okay. It's a yes from me. It's a, a bloody stiff yes from me as well. Yes. Man, mind a hard yes. Unbelievable. That's the one thing. As good as Sammy's been as a manager, everyone's forgotten that he is one of the best wrestlers in the world. Mm -hmm. So give him the IC Championship and let him wrestle because he's good at it. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. There's so many good matches you could have with Sammy as the champion. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ross. Um, I want The Undertaker to get involved on Sunday and do things like he did to Kane in the build-up to WrestleMania 20. I'm talking about the ring shaking oh. and the rain in, indoors and stuff like that. Imagine what could be done. I haven't written down what it could be because I don't know what the possibilities are here in 2020. If that was 2004 and we're making the ring shake after a night's worth of action, right. what could be possible today? You could lift the ring up. Oh, I've got an oh, idea. Lift the you ring know what they're, they're good at now is like I saw a video the other day. It's a couple of years old now where... Uh, Tupac was performing on stage. A hologram. hologram. Have a hologram of The Undertaker come in. Then Styles it. tries to punch him. Yeah, he falls through it. <laughs> 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 Flashbacks to that Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt thing. Yeah, I'd like to see But a, a good version, not yeah. a bad version. They like did that. the thing, didn't they, with uh, with Ambrose and Bray, where they had the smoke coming out of yeah. the, well, the lantern, I guess it must yeah. have been. Uh, and something was projected on it, but they can do better than that now with technology. <sighs> Technology's can, advanced. But will they? That's why I'm hesitant to say yes. It's what because we want. It's what happen. we want. Oh, of course it is. Yeah, of course <laughs> it is. Well, it's a yes if that's the case, but I, I'm just worried that, that we'll get their idea of what's cool, which might lead to another Bray Wyatt projector style thing. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that is the issue with this pitch. Yeah. It, but I just think it's a good thing because Taker wouldn't have to... Because if he turns up on Sunday, you presume he'd have to do something physical. And I, yeah, I don't want to be that guy, but the more he does physical things, the less Undertaker-ish he is, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. harsh as a mother, t mother nature. Oh, the time thing. It's horrible, isn't it, when you get old? Father time. Father mother time. Nature, mother father nature, father time. Yeah, bloody yeah. horrible couple. Um, it's a yes for me, anyway. I do like that. And I feel like it would be nice for AJ because you, you seem to think, I imagine, anyway, that every wrestler who gets a big singles feud with Taker for WrestleMania, they want that feud. They want to be scared mm. in the ring and they want yeah. all of the spooky mind games and everything. So, yeah. What, 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 what do you know more about production than us two? What is possible? What do you reckon? On uh, it, like, truthfully. I don't know how the hologram stuff works, but I would assume the hologram thing is possible. I'm trying to think. Like, they're, they're so amazing, and they always, like, pull something really unique out the bag. WWE are obviously the world leaders in sports entertainment, but production <laughs> in sports entertainment, they do things unlike... So I don't really want, even want to sit here and speculate too much because there are things that I'm not aware of that they'll be able to do. So leave it to the pros. You know, I can <laughs> even figure out where to put the lights earlier. Got one. You know those big 3D... Graphics they have yeah, yeah. Uh, during some pay per views, and we're watching it on the network. We're like, is that a big dog and that sort of stuff? Like the big things. Have AJ have one, and have Undertaker somehow make it fall on him, and he sees it, and then it just it just falls past him. It wouldn't goes, work too well for the live crowd. You just see <laughs> just AJ, AJ go. Whoa! Oh, that's <laughs> what we want to happen. So, sorry, yeah, okay. I tell you, the least. No, I'm, ignore that. That was rubbish. That was awful. <laughs> the least I'm accepting is it is the ring shaking with the lights down and the dramatic music happening. That's all I want, or maybe a casket on fire. Throw it at AJ, set him on fire. How did they have the fake corpses that time? They looked quite real. Which fake that? corpses? Was it not? Six. Have I made that up? Bob, Bob Orton. Did that not look real? Was that actually just Bob Orton? It was a fake Bob Orton, wasn't it? It was a fake I Diesel. Don't remember. 
Oh, and he was there and he saw it. Not Glenn Jacobs, like an actual figure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, something like that. Yeah, they yeah. could do really good stuff. Yeah. yeah. What could be possible? Yeah, just something spooky and supernatural and outside the box. Come on. I like the ring vibrating. Yeah. Like when you drop your phone down the back of the sofa. That's what I'm imagining. <laughs> 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 Ringing it, trying to find it. That's what I want. My second pitch is to do with the Andrade versus uh, Umberto Carrillo match. So what I think should happen here, and I'm going to feel so clever if this happens, right? So I think Andrade's been a heel for a while now, but he's really good. So I'd like to see him turn face at some point. That might sound stupid, but I don't know if you've noticed, there's a new hunky Latino man on the scene to turn to be the heel and for Andrade to go off and be a real workhorse hero. Like, I think he can be. Um, so I'm going to say that in this match, despite Umberto putting up like a great fight, he's nearly got the win a few times. Andrade's quality shines through on his experience. He's got Humberto Carrillo dead to rights. He's hit his finisher. Umberto's about to lose. Zelina Vega distracts the referee. Andrade's like... I was about to go for the pinfall. Angel Garza runs in, hits Korea with his finisher, and then goes, there you go, mate, I've won the match for you. Gets out the ring. Andrade's like, what? Pins him anyway. And he's like, okay. He's celebrating with the belt, but really confused. And then Garza and Zelina are both like, we did it for you. We, we got you the win, mate. They start necking on. They don't start necking on. <laughs> Alistair Black would have issues, I feel. But Charlotte. Charlotte, mm. yeah. No, I meant Zelina and... Uh... Angel. Oh, gotcha. But, but, you could get Charlotte, <laughs> but you could get Charlotte involved as well. No, um, Angel and Zelina are both like, we, we won it for you, mate. We did it for you. And Andrade's like, well, no, you didn't. I had the match won anyway. But Angel Garz is so arrogant and so cocky. He's like, yes, my friend, I won it for you. Like, we're, we're, we're you know, we're, we're friends together. And Andrade's like, no, I don't like this. And it, it starts a slow burn. And eventually, Garza and Zelina turn on Andrade. Because Zelina's motivation for it, I guess, is that, you know, he's younger He's more promising. She's sick of Andrade. She wants to jump ship to the next big thing. And then they have a feud. Angel and Andrade. I love it. I, I, I think it's really great. Uh, the, the one problem I guess it presents, um, and it's a minor thing that's easily solvable, is that Andrade is a guy who needs a mouthpiece. Mm. So I don't know who you'd put him with next. Charlotte. But Rick. No, that's weird. Rick. Yeah. Bring back oh, Rick Flair. <laughs> <laughs> it's my son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> the last person you want near a mic. Riddick Moss. Riddick Riddick Moss. <laughs> the offensive lineman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't really have anything to add. I think that's great. And it's it a would, good point, it would, though. It would sort mouthpiece. of save this feud, if you want to call it, this sort of mishmash of various feuds that's happening at the moment, which hasn't been especially enjoyable. Good matches and everything, but it could do with a, a little bit of oomph. So, yeah. I feel like it's a good point, though, about Andrade's mic skills. His English is improving, but I don't think he's yet at the level where he can do on his own without without a mouthpiece. So that is a fair point. Yeah. Give him Sami Zayn. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Ross? Yes, I'm fully on board. Nice. Just in the process, do something horrible to Humberto. So he doesn't oh. get a, another shot of the US title because it's enough now. He's been getting a lot of shots. It's, it's a lot now, yeah. He's been losing matches and getting shots. That's shot. the joke, I tell you. He's taking yeah. the biscuit. You're not a fan? No, I, well, there's a bit disconnect there. He's a fantastic, lovely, smooth wrestler with, yeah. lovely, with a lovely face. With a lovely, smooth face, yeah. yeah. yeah but, uh, Except for that one bit there. That's, that's, the bit that all the, that's the bit that all the women go mental for. Or the one dimple. The dimples, yeah, yeah. Is it your one, though, isn't it? Some people, it? some people have one dimple. Humberto's got like two craze in his face, hasn't he? I thought he's got one, one or two. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. study these things. And as good looking a man as Umberto is, I think that Angel Garza. Angel Garza. Oh, Goodness oh, yeah. me. I would. Yeah. What a man. Yeah, really hot. Wow. Yep, yeah, anyway. Double yes there, I think. <laughs> uh, mine relates to the pre show. Now, who here watches the pre show? I know you do. I do. So who here watches the pre show? It's for ones where I'm not on camera reacting. I'm in the office yeah. making notes for what happened at. Mm -hmm. That's a little window behind the scenes there for everybody. So I have it on in the background yeah. while I'm... If a match is happening, you watch it. I watch the match. The rest of the time, it's just David Otunga being bad. Oh, so I'm gonna, I'm I like gonna... David. It's Jonathan Coachman. <laughs> no, David Otunga is a waste Dude. of oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like Dave. No. no. Yeah, I do. Why? Nothing Why? like him. Name three Dave. good qualities. He's clever. No, he's not. Yes, he yeah, is. He's Harvard. Doesn't make yeah. any good wrestling points. He's not he's clever in the wrestling. He's, <laughs> he's just not right, a right. squared circle he's, like us here. He's academic, well dressed. Um, not well dressed. He is well dressed. He has, got, he has got good clothes. And, Do you reckon? Yeah. and handsome. And a good dad. Oh, I don't think he's that handsome. That's four. Either. You don't think David Otunga's. If he was I'd on this video, we'd all, look, we'd all look silly if David was on this video with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fair enough. Anyway, well, sorry. Speak for yourself, actually. But, um, <laughs> so it's the pre show and. Christian's on the panel, right? Right. Maybe. I don't know. He is on the panel. This In, in my head, he's, he's on the panel. Uh, and he's talking, and he, he, things seem a little bit off mm. because he's unhappy. He's, still, he's, he's torn up about what Randy Orton did to his friend Edge. And then while Christian's talking, in runs Randy Orton. Oh. Punk kicks him, and then the camera's cut away like it's not even meant to be happening. 
Uh, there are a few good things about this. Orton, with the exception of Edge's children, has killed everybody close to Edge. Pretty much, anyway. Um, but also, it's a nice reason to watch the pre-show, which is largely too long and too bad. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, it, it cuts away to the ring. You hear like production going crazy, get him out of her sort of thing. You, it, it cuts back finally. Christian's not on screen. You don't see him getting taken off. It wasn't meant to happen. Oh. This is unscripted. It's real baby. I've got to stop saying baby. Baby. <laughs> said that Playboy. Four times. <laughs> Shades of Seth Rollins at TakeOver. Mm -hmm. Show's called TakeOver, right? That was good. People yeah. liked it. I like this as well. Can I make one amendment? Suggest one of them. No, because when you do this, it's always better. And then I go, oh. Right, <laughs> I should, no, go on, go on. <laughs> I think that he should punk kick him, but before that, he should RKO him on the desk. Like, yeah, it's, it's a bit of an awkward setup if yeah. Chris is just sat there and he runs up punk and jumps. Jam <laughs> I think he should just shoot him with an air rifle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not kill him, but yeah, you know, sure. yeah. it's yeah, yeah. reminding me. Do you remember when he RKO'd Hogan over the top of the over the body of the car? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I really like it. I think that generally, I remember I pitched one once where there should be a pre-show match that runs over and just mm. carries on. I think they should. They've got way more scope to do things with the pre-show that they just don't do, and it would get people watching it. And maybe even watch the show. But you've got to make it like a sports broadcast. No, oh, I know you do. It's wrestling. <laughs> Bloody wrestling. <laughs> No, that's a yes for me. Thank you. There's a major flaw here, Adam. Ooh. As a fan of ENC's Pod of Awesomeness, the recently deceased, of course, podcast, I think Christian's finding a lot of pleasure in what happened to Edge <laughs> and Beth. Is okay. he? Okay. Mm, What's he doing? They're friends, but they don't like each other. They would like to see each other die. Oh, come on. Yeah, they're, they're, they're brothers, no. Ross, remember? <laughs> <laughs> I think Christian was watching that segment where Edge got decapitated by Orton with a bag of popcorn and a nice juicy drink. That's your thought. I don't think that's the general consensus, but okay. Give me another stiff no, Ross. No, it's a yes. I'm just saying it's just a flaw. Do you okay. feel that that might be the, the WrestleMania finish? That Orton's about to do something disgusting to Edge, but then Christian saves the day. Next oh. on Everyone the loves that. No, he doesn't neck on the Trish. What's with all the neck? I don't know. It's pictures. Um, nah, it's, a bit, it's two big yeses. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Thank you. Ross, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm <laughs> no, if Matthew had done that, we'd never stop principles that. I don't know. Okay. What a great Just segue. Fluent <laughs> presenting. Um, I'm going back to the tag team chamber match. Um, Otis and Tuke are making their entrance down to the ring. Necking on. Yes. Ass to mouth. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that... Anyway, Tucky enters the chamber first. They aren't one of the two teams starting the match. Yeah. Tucky goes into the pod but Otis does not follow him. No, not because he can't fit, because he's locked Tucker in there. And he's like, Tucker, it's time to reveal the truth. You're trapped in there. There's nowhere to go. Face up to what you've done, you absolute proverbial. What? And he flashes up to the Tron there. Otis has hired a private detective no. to research where that text message was sent from. The private detective has tracked Mandy's phone, and Mandy's phone was in Tucker's spot in the locker room because that's how precise technology is these days. They've tracked it down to the square foot inch. I don't know what the right term is. They've found out that Tucker sent... Maybe they've done more detective work. I just thought about the location <laughs> so. thing. Yeah, they've done more stuff there. And Otis flashes up the, the private detective. Maybe Otis could be... Maybe the fashion police are the detectives in this scenario. What is your pitch here, Ross? No. I was waiting. I was like, we need a detective. I'm glad you've said that because now I'm on board. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Otis, okay. Otis is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, he's uh, he's got all this evidence. You've done it, Tucky. You've done it. It's been revealed that Tucky is the man behind the text, the man who ruined the date, the man who invited Dolph Ziggler to go into that room at the same time as Mandy. It's, be all, it's all just coming out. It's just a, a wonderful, really silly wrestling reveal, all the bells and whistles, not the, the sort of way down the Lana wedding thing at the start of the year. Not that bad way, right. the good way. Yeah. Which is similar, but good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so there you go. There's the pitch. Tucky is outed as the man who's Then behind. how do they have the match? What happens then in the match? Tucky just, I don't know, just does something to... Uh, Otis does something to Tucky inside the chamber pod. Tucky's stuck there all night, all year. Who cares about Tucky? Now he's dead to us all. Well... And then Otis goes on and wins the tag team championships by himself. Oh. This is what we want to see, remember, not what we think will happen. 
I didn't say Silence. Okay. Can you go first? Because I, I, don't, I don't know how to process it. There's a lot to digest. There is. I won't it's, lie. It's not like, Otis has got a... <laughs> Otis has got a detective. The detective reveals his Tucky. Tucky's then just trapped in his pod. Otis does something to, to, to punish him and maybe zaps him with a taser or something through the cage wall. And then Tucky... Uh, sorry, Otis goes on to win the tag team titles by himself. Four simple steps. I thought you then. liked Tucky. I don't like Tucky. Not after this. Not after he's been very insecure on Twitter and just blatantly just admitting that he did it. How am man? I don't know where this leads. I'm going to take this seriously. I don't know where this leads uh, if Otis wins the tag team titles on his own. Braun Strowman did it. Yeah, yeah. No, it Nicholas. Nicholas, but... Uh, he tagged in. Yeah, bring, yeah. Bring back Nicholas. He... <laughs> yeah, but no, no, but then what? Is Tucky challenging for the tag team championships when those two Tucky have Tucky is done. The company fire. Oh, in which case, yeah. I'm, yeah, it's a yes for me. Company, <laughs> if Tucky, if Tucky what would be the, the, the official term... To fire Tuck, what the what the, gra- the grounds to fire Tucky on for doing this to Otis? Not being entertaining. <laughs> I'm joking. They can't fire like, something mis- for a word to, in front of Miss People mis- have tried to murder each other in wrestling before. Yeah, they have, but this hasn't affected me. Okay. They, oh, sorry, they haven't affected <laughs> no, me. Right. This, this hasn't affected, affected you either. <laughs> one tweet, he's on one. <laughs> I feel like I've been part of it now. Unfortunately, oh, go on. No, well, I was going to say I can't. Uh, it's a no for me, just purely because I like Tucker. And I think he's shown a bit of character in this storyline. And no, I don't want to see heavy machinery break up. Do you think he's weird? <laughs> no, I think the Otis way, is weird. The way Have you not seen them? I think Otis, like, hey the there, buddy old pal. I think, <laughs> the, <laughs> the, <laughs> no, I think the one who goes, me, 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 Mandy. I think that's the weird <laughs> one in this tag team. <laughs> don't leave him. <laughs> he's, not, he's not comfortable around women. He's overcoming his boundaries. His, his yeah, that's and great. Like, and that's lovely. It's a but very inspirational story. It is, it is an inspirational story. Yeah, it is. Well, but, this is great because if Tucky and Otis do break up, he's got... Tucky, I mean, has got a new tag team partner in Jack the Giant. Yeah, me, yeah. <laughs> the, the one man who likes him in the world. I remember he had, they had they were part of a multi-man tag match, I think, against at some pay-per-view against Brian and Rowan. Uh, and yeah. Tucky was like showing off some serious athleticism that I did not know he possessed. And I was like, whoa. Ooh, Cult Arlick logo for Studio TV MP4. Starting up again now. <laughs> <Is> somebody just <laughs> It's all good. It's all right. fine. Um so hey, I'm unfortunately gonna... it's a no from me. I'm gonna give you a yes, because you screwed me out of a yes earlier, and I'm gonna be the bigger man. <laughs> How noble of you. Thank you. <laughs> right, I'll do my last one. Now, we normally end these videos with a silly one. Miz turning into chips. Sorry, Miz's dad turning into yeah, chips. Yeah, George, Miz wouldn't do that. Whatever human. Sam was on about the other week. But I think that <laughs> I feel like I'm going to end this one with a serious plea, a serious one. Um, I think that, that this obviously involves the Lucha House Party, right? No, they should win the tag team titles in the... What? Is what? that it, really? <laughs> they yeah, should win. They should win. It's not what I Over think. the new it's day, the Usos. Yes, and I've got a reason. First of all, because I love Lindsay Dorado, right? And even at this point, I, even I don't know why I do, but I love Lindsay Dorado. Grand Metal yeah, whatever. But Lindsay is great. And I feel like in this Elimination Chamber match, they've got all the stories in there for the other teams to just busy themselves with. Who else is in there? Heavy Machinery, Ziggler and Rude. Something's going to happen there. Maybe Sonya will come out through the great... Um, they've got New Day and Usos, an eternal rivalry. Mm-hmm. They still want to see who's the best. I'm sure something was alluded to on a SmackDown recently where the Usos were like, we're going to have one more ding, yeah. dong, yeah. dang. They use the word to begin with D. So they all take each other out and stuff, and you're left with Lindsay and Grand Metalik against Miz and Morrison, the champions that everyone hates. And I think that this is the time. Not against Lucha House Party. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the time that Lindsay and Grandma Italy can win something because they've been they've had such a bad time of it like apart from Grandma Italy reaching the finals of the Cruiserweight Classic years ago now um, well they had that feud with Lars which was weird they've had the feud they, with the... they beat him down at Super Showdown which yeah. is on par with Wrestlemania they lost via DQ to him yeah Kalisto <clears> beat <throat> Braun Strowman in a bin once yeah yeah they've had more than where's enough where's Kalisto involved in this because I think he's injured, yeah, I think oh, he's injured he? at the moment yeah. um, and I think that I think they had that. Oh, they had that. Oh, that really awful feud with the revival where it was Lucha House rules and everyone hated. Yeah, I forgot about that. That. that was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they're just wacky. They have fun. Um, no, I want. I'm not hopeful of how this is going to go, but I, I think the Lucha House Party should win the tag team titles in this Elimination Chamber match because everyone else has got other feuds to go on with. You know we're building to WrestleMania, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That would be they're worse gonna, than David Arquette have, winning the they're world not title. Have the SmackDown tag belt on the main show. No, that's fair. Uh, it wouldn't be worse than David Arquette. I wouldn't have it on the show at all if the Lucha House Party was holding them. I'm trying to <laughs> imagine seen, the pop. The reaction would be so pissing funny if they won. We have seen. <laughs> we have seen 
Not if they've bravely survived all the way through. <laughs> We've seen Kofi make like become a main eventer in an elimination Don't chamber match. Don't compare Kofi. We've to seen it happen too. in Kofi's elimination chamber match with Brian and everything. Now it's time for <laughs> for the Luchas party. My boys. A boy and his mate. It's a no from me. Yeah, fair enough. And I'm not going to add anything to All right. Yeah, I, I don't want to say that either. Well, you're going to look like fools <laughs> this Sunday when they win. Um, we're doing all kinds of coverage of Elimination Chamber this weekend. Mm-hmm. We're doing a What Happened Now. I believe there'll be live reactions going out after the event. Mm-hmm. Tape uh, reactions, graded, yep. WTF. We got the bloody lot. Everything. So do check that out on Cultaholic. I'm going to take that thing back off Tom and take oh, that yeah. bloody fidget spinner off. I can't believe he's done that. He has. It's just horrible. He's already knackered the belt and now he's trying to cover it with a bit of cardboard. Bell end. So to follow all of that exciting action, both in and outside of WWE, do uh, check out our coverage of this week's Elimination Chamber event and we hope you enjoy it too. Thanks very much, Adam and Ross, for joining us. Thank you, Thank Jack. You. And we'll catch you in a bit. <laughs>